Hey folks, welcome to Whiskey Whistle, your independent wise choice for whiskey and spirits reviews. Today on Whiskey Whistle, review number 226, we're going to Japan. We're going to be looking at the Hakushu Distillers Reserve. Now, I just picked this up not long ago and uh, really happy to find a half bottle. This is a 350 milliliter bottle. It's 43% ABV and I believe it's natural in color. It's very light as you'll see. And quite often when you find a, a whiskey bottle that's colored glass like this green or be it brown or perhaps even a, a blackish hue, quite often the whiskey inside is uh, uh, devoid of um, uh, added color. All natural, I should say. So let's get that poured. I've got my very handsome Yamazaki distillery um, distillery glass. This is actually the tasting glass that uh, Shinji Fuku what's his name Fukuyo Shinji Fukuyo uses when he blends his whiskey. Let's get that poured. These are both part of the Suntory group. I think that's plenty. Maybe just a dash more. We like a dash more here. Whiskey whistle. And a screw top. Now, you know, a lot of people think that this is cheap, it is inferior. Now, stylistically, it might not be as exciting as, uh, as a cork. However, it does the job of sealing the bottle better. And unlike wine, whiskey does not age in the bottle. So no passage of air is required. And in fact, that's a detriment to whiskey. Uh, it's better not to have any oxygen interacting with the whiskey in the bottle to preserve it, preserve it for a long time. Uh, now, uh, right, Suntory whiskey. Well, just in case you're not sure, here is the Yamazaki Distillery Reserve, which I have yet to open, and I'm probably not going to. I've already rev reviewed this one. That was also a smaller bottle that I brought back from Japan, but very similar in style. And this one is a uh, brownish hue of glass, as you can see. So that's the full bottle there. But wait, there's more. Always more here. That's what I like. Number three of Suntory that I have here. In fact, I've got three, I've got four. Uh, I think I've got about five Suntory whiskeys hanging about the house. This is the Chita, and that's their single grain Japanese whiskey. Also 43%, isn't it? Yes, it is. They're all 43%. Uh, they're all smartly packaged with screw tops and should be available pretty much worldwide. Um, you should be able to find Chita anyway in the US of A. Canada, pr probably maybe in Ontario. Uh, maybe in BC, I don't think in Manitoba yet, that's where I'm from. However, I live here in Seoul, South Korea. So, now then, we are going to look at the color of the Hakushu Distillers Reserve. Then we will look at, this is what you can do with a, uh, uh, a stemmed glass. You can't really do that with a uh, Glencairn, anyway. Uh, as I was saying, we will look at the color. Then we'll look at the legs. I like looking at the legs of the whiskey. That tells me a little bit about the viscosity. It's also very appealing to the eye. Then we'll have a look at the nose. We'll smell and uh, get a sense of how the whiskey smells. We will taste the whiskey and check out the palate. Um, after we've swallowed, we will check out the finish and see how, that, how long it goes and what kind of flavors are left. And then finally, we'll give it a whiskey whistle whiskey score at the end. There will be a little surprise coming at the end of this show, so make sure you watch right to the end. And don't forget to subscribe if you've been watching Whiskey Whistle for a few uh, reviews already. All right, so the color. Pardon the noise. My children's coloring books. Now, I'm going to call that a very light gold. It's definitely a golden hue, but on the paler end, perhaps a, a 10K, <laughs> a 10K gold. Um, anyway, very attractive, I would say. 
go anyway it's you know at the lighter end of gold or perhaps a um, uh, slightly deeper shade of like a lemon yellow a little bit of straw anyway you get the idea now then the legs we are going to roll it around a little bit get some whiskey right up to the lip of the glass and voila let's see what happens here now I notice that the first legs that come down come down fairly quickly but then you'll notice the uh, secondary legs are just now now nearly back down to the bottom of the the, the whiskey I should say uh, and it just keeps drizzling and drizzling so you've got a very good viscosity here with uh, with the Hakusha Distillers Reserve so really looking forward to trying that now quite often when I buy a whiskey it stays here in the house for quite a while before I end up reviewing it now with this one well I've uh, uh, expedited the review somewhat and I'm in the middle of doing some uh, Irish whiskey reviews also some um, uh, bourbon and uh, rye American whiskey reviews um, and what else am I doing uh, and uh, a, a brand of scotch whiskey single malt scotch whiskey that I'm in the middle of re reviewing and I'm doing all of these uh, serially but not all at once so uh, well I guess I can't really call that serially but anyway these are the things that are going on in the channel right now so have a look back uh, onto the main part of uh, the YouTube channel. Have a look at all of the reviews that are there. And I encourage you to have a look and uh, watch as many as you can. Hopefully binge watching. I like binge watching. <laughs> ah. uh, I'm probably the only person who has ever told his reviewers to binge watch his reviews. Or hers. <laughs> All right, now I'm noticing as I'm sitting here that it has quite an aroma. So you'll get a sense of, of how the whiskey smells, uh, even not so exactly right, right up close to your nose. So you may want to open it and, um, uh, you know, wish it around your glass a little bit. Wish, whisk, whisk it around your glass, uh, agitate it somewhat to get uh, some of the whiskey evaporating and see what you can smell and I'm smelling a lot of uh, oak influence um, big time big time oak influence here and Hakushu in case you don't you're not aware Japanese single malt I mentioned that already uh, it has a very cool name which is the distillery surrounded by forest very beautiful picturesque uh, picturesque distillery they've got and a uh, very interestingly shaped distillery too. It looks like uh, something straight out of the, uh, the 70s. It's also a peated Japanese single malt whiskey. It's peated. They do lightly peated. They also do heavy peat. And I had the chance to try some of the heavy peated Hakushu, in fact, uh, at the Yamazaki distillery last summer. It knocked my socks off. All of the whiskeys there did. Uh, this is also an excellent product. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, hence the expedition of this review. All right, we're getting into the palette now. Cheers, everyone. I hope you're well. Coming up to Christmas. Are you ready for that? Mmm. <laughs> I forgot the nose, didn't I? Let's backtrack. <laughs> oh, should I edit that? I'm not going to edit that. I'm going to leave it in there just for fun. All right, uh, let's check out the nose. Let's smell the whiskey first. As I said, it's very fragrant, very oak forward. Spices, lots of spice. There's a hint of peat in there. And very interestingly, once you've poured the glass and you let it sit and you've been smelling it for a little while, letting your nose acclimatize to some of the smells, 
you'll find in the midst of all of that some very rich vanilla. And everybody loves vanilla. That's probably one of the backbone scents of whiskey worldwide, no matter where you are. Why would that be, by the way? That's because of the oak. There are actually vanillins, uh, vanillins contained in the wood. And um, especially during the charring process, you get vanillins that actually uh, increase in number. Uh, and I just read about this today, yet again. Well, I heard about it before, but I read about it today. I've been doing a bit of editing for some uh, academic journals. And one of them was about biochar. And um, it talked about the um, emergence of vanillin um, during the biochar, during the um, pyrolytic uh, conversion. Pyrolytic, py pyrolysis, I guess you call it. Burning, basically burning. <laughs> when you burn wood, uh, that's where the word pyro comes from. So, uh, right, we were smelling that, weren't we? As I shift my eyes back to the side. All right, now I'm going to check out my notes, just so I can tell you everything I wanted to tell you. Oh, the fruit. Green apples. Green apples. Also some grassy florals. I mentioned the wood, but during my, my smelling and uh, testing of this before, uh, what I noticed was something like balsam, balsam wood, uh, a dense lush forest, especially like later in spring when it's fully green, maybe after a rain when you really get the, uh, the dusty, dusty stuff off the, the, the trees and the, you know, the smells are just uh, you know, flying off of everything. Um, I mentioned the vanilla, also some white chocolate. And interestingly, the peat comes and goes, which is interesting. Uh, as I say, interesting twice. And um, yes, vanilla, I mentioned the vanilla. All right, on to the palate yet again. <laughs> Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. Now, if this comes in like a lamb, it goes out like a tiger. It's got a very, it's got a very soft entry onto your palate. Uh, there, it's followed by some tartness, very fruity tartness. There's a gentle peat there, a lot of fresh fruits predominantly, uh, including some tropical fruits too. The peat is especially better noticed by smacking your lips while you've got it in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You really get that um, puff of peat coming through. And I know one person who would love that peat, the uh, puffing peat from the puckering of your, of your pucker. <laughs> Ah, all right. Um, <clears throat> to cut that out a little bit. you really get the peat by puckering and smacking your lips uh, as you drink that. Sounds terrible, looks ridiculous. Do it at home, do not do that at the bar, especially if you're single. You're not going to be um, meeting anybody. Um, there is one gentleman at another channel who I think would especially appreciate that puffing peaty, uh, puffing peaty I can't do any other peas. Now, I know there's one other gentleman on another channel who would especially appreciate the puffing peatiness that uh, is coming forth 
from puckering and uh, smacking your lips. And his name is Bart. Oh, and a quick shout out to FQ, Food Quig. Now, uh, if you haven't seen Food Quig on YouTube, you should watch. F O O D Q U I G. Very interesting man. And he's also Canadian. Cheers to us Canucks. Hmm. Now the finish is especially dominated by tropical fruit. You do get some wood smoke puffs coming through in the finish as well. It's medium dry and there's still quite a herbal um, greenish type of a flavor left in my mouth. Kind of like Claret's gum. So my mouth feels very fresh right now and I feel like if I were to kiss my wife that she would wonder if I had, um, you know, used a special mouthwash. Maybe. <laughs> uh, all right. Now we're going to add some water here. Uh, how am I doing there? I think I need a little bit more in there because, again, I've got a little something to surprise you with uh, at the end of the show. Oops. Okay. As I make my way down to the third, the top third of that bottle. All right, we are going to put in uh, about one and a half milliliters of water in there, and that's it. And I guess I'd be probably down to about 40%, maybe a little bit less. All right, I'm going to stir that a bit more. Now you will see some people whip it around in that fashion and you'll see others go nice and slow. There could be reasons to do both. Uh, what I want to do is try to get, as, as the whiskey leaps out of the glass, what I want to do is try to get some of the compounds that are stuck inside the water, inside the liquid, uh, to be released. Yeah, I'm noticing a little bit more of the peat on the nose here. And I'm noticing the vanilla coming through. Also, especially the aged peat. I think I mentioned that that uh, the Hakushu, maybe I didn't, the Hakushu is a blend of um, uh, younger, younger, lightly peated Hakushu with older, 18 years and older, older, um, heavily peated. And I could smell that heavily peated older whiskey in here. Hmm. All right. Now then, uh, I mentioned the fruit jumping out, apples, some red crunchy grapes, light papaya. Uh, I can even smell the dryness here now. Interesting. The peat is still there as I mentioned and uh, vanilla. Uh, it's interesting. It comes and goes here. It's kind of cloying and I think that's just the, your nose playing tricks on you. Hmm. All right now then. Cheers. Let's get onto the, the palate with water. Whoops. All right, let's get on to the palate with water. Cheers again. Hmm. Still a nice soft entry. The fruit has really come forward here. It's kind of like a fruit concentrate. There's a hint of dryness there. Uh, vanilla also still present. Peat still in the picture as well. And um, more and more tropical fruits. I'm noticing more and more tropical fruits as time passes and as, uh, as I've added water. Now, Hakushu has the, um, the ability 
I think, uh, to probably, most likely, blow out every other whiskey in the world away. And uh, there is a, a certain mm, uh, certain feeling that I get with with a certain number of whiskies, and it is seems to be um, a little bit of not necessarily peat, but there has to be some kind of a special characteristic which may be coming from the wood. That could be the wood talking here, but uh, it really will um, basically take over your senses, take over your mind, and uh, if you let it, you'll be left just bedazzled by its beauty in your mouth. Hmm. Very, very nice. And the finish here with water, enhanced fruit, the finish seems longer with water. That's it. All right, well, let's get on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Hakusho Distillers Reserve. What's that going to be? It's going to be 90 out of 100. Well, what can I say? It's an amazing whiskey. It's very well matured. Unlike some NAS, I would absolutely love to see Hakushu given the same exposure as Yamazaki and I wish Suntory would would push Hakushu and see what happens because I really think that uh, there could be some absolute world beating Hakushu uh, coming from this distillery with a bit of effort from Suntory and I'm sure they've got the maturing stocks on hand and now is the time you know, if you're a distiller and if you've got old whiskeys, do not wait because now is when you need to strike that steel. Just saying. So, 90 out of 100. So what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? Well, first of all, I want to give a little prelude. You have to watch what's coming next on the next video. And... Should I give a hint? I'll just say that there's going to be some uh, blending going on here on the channel. Some Japanese blending. All right. So stay tuned for that. Now, what I'm going to do now uh, is something that uh, uh, that Suntory recommends that I really enjoyed in Japan. So you'll have to wait just a minute. Actually, probably just a second because I will cut that out. Um, so that uh, the time, your your valuable time is not wasted oh, here on Whiskey Whistle. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, oops. <clears throat> All right, welcome back. So, what are we going to do here? We're going to make a Hakushu highball, a mini highball. Now, I don't have the ice. I wasn't planning to review Hakushu tonight, but this is what happened. So what have I done? I have chilled some Hakushu. Now it's very cold, uh, so that should do the trick. The glass is also uh, very cold. I'm going to hide the label. Maybe you saw that already. 
if you've been watching my channel, you know what glass that is. And we'll put in some club soda. Now, when you're making a highball, always put the club soda in last. Isn't that nice? And we need to stir a little bit. Mm. I think so. And I've got a straw here I can do that with. I need that for the next show. Keep that in mind. Black straw. What's he going to do with a black straw? Honey. <laughs> uh. Okay. Now, when you're stirring it, don't stir it too much because you'll end up killing all of the bubbles. And the bubbles are one of the important things in a highball. All right, so here we have a Hakushu highball. Cheers, everyone, and cheers to the Suntory people in Japan. Nice to have met you. Hopefully, we'll see you again. Now, you still get a very powerful scent coming from the highball. And especially the the oak influence, and I think this is where Japan, Japan, uh, where Japan uh, and whiskey making excels. Maybe especially Suntory. Cheers. Oh, that's the key. Don't kill those bubbles. It's fruity, it's creamy. The vanilla has returned. It's kind of like cream soda, nearly like cream soda. And uh, honestly, if you try a highball like this, I have a feeling that you may want to stop drinking soda, like as in soda pop. Let's try that again. Hmm, great. Now, could I have made it a bit stronger? What I find for myself is that I like a fairly strong highball. Now this isn't cold, so I'm committing a bit of a um, blasphemous act here, but let's see what happens with a little bit more Hakushu. And we'll start with the black straw again. <laughs> okay, one more time. Hmm, very, very lovely scent. Vanilla and the wood, this is what's left here. Peat is gone, largely. Well, that hits the spot for me. Don't forget to subscribe right over here. And we'll see you next time. Watch that next show. Goodbye. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.